Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of a Mobile Vetter K Yacht 85 on a 2018. So start my walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. To open all your locks, you use the habitation key, which is this key here. And then you'll be able to open the LPG locker, which is your gas locker. And in here you can fit two bottles. So that's our six kilogram test bottle. To connect the cylinder to the van, what you need to do is you need to tie it in front and at the bottom and at the top on the front with the two straps provided and you've got space for a spare and then to connect the pigtail which is this pipe here that goes from the cylinder to the regulator it's a left hand thread with the being gas so opposite threads with the being gas left to tighten right to loosen and then you turn the cylinder on and off from the top of the bottle always making sure that you turn it off before you do start traveling because it's a lot safer when you're traveling on the road with an isolated cylinder just in case anything does happen You'll notice you've got your oil on the top and then you've got a cereal there for a driveway awning. Your habitation door opens with the key as well so you put in, turn it to the left to open and to the right to lock. You've got handy little storage compartments like this so you can put all your wet items in here such as leveling ramps, hookup blades, shoes, any bits and pieces that you don't want the van to get dirty with you can pop in there. Here is your cassette. So to get your cassette out the vehicle what you need to do is you need to lift the orange handle you slide the cassette free of the vehicle then you can either carry it or you can lift the handle, it's got two wheels on the bottom and you can drag it to your waste disposal point when it's full. And then to empty the cassette, what you need to do is you need to lift the spout up and take the cap off. Take it to your waste disposal site, which is normally beside your toilet block. Press the orange button at the back, which allows, allows air in, stops it glugging and tip the content of the cassette out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap there, so you pop about a pint of water in, give it a quick rinse and tip out again, and then you'll want to put some chemical in, so you can either do it by measuring it with this with here, it's 120 mil, or you can do it by eye, and you just want to pour either the blue or the green chemical, about 120 mil, down this spout here, and fill it with a chemical, and then you can go back into the vehicle. But ask your site what chemical they prefer you to use because some now want the green as it's more environmentally friendly to discharge on than the blue. But they'll let you know when you book the site and then just pop the handle back down and that's the cassette locked into place. You can now use the toilet. It's your pink, Callum. Yeah. Here you have your external TV point, so if you want a super sight, you can use their aerial by connecting it to the vehicle, so you will need to carry a length of coax with you, so you can pop it in there, or you can use the F-type connector, which is more the satellite connector down to here. You've got a plug there, which is a continental plug, so you'll need the adapter, and you've got a old style 12 volt point there, so you'll need the adapter for that as well to get 12 volt to here. This is your external barbecue point, so external gas point, so if you want to power a barbecue via gas, instead of carrying a separate cylinder with you, you can use the cylinders that are on the vehicle. You need a release connector here, some orange gas hose and, and, some ju and a jubilee clip to connect both ends together. Pop one end in the van, one end on the Kadak or awning heater or barbecue and you'll get your gas off the, off the van itself. In the garage, which is all checker plate lines, you do have your tethering points here. You've got a 230 volt socket. It's heated. You've got a light, a rafter bar for your awning and your awning winding handle there. And then you do have a tyre sealant kit there. So that is for if you get a puncture 
you can put the the tire inflation kit and the gel pack in the tire but if you've got a puncture what i would advise is just to blow it up if it can get you off the road and get you to a tire shop you can then save the tire as soon as you put the gel pack into the tire the tire is then to be replaced your autumn works with the handle so put the handle in the back here and then you just need to wind the awning out Make sure that you're not using the awning in any wind speeds over 15 mile an hour because you can damage the vehicle and the awning or someone else's vehicle parked close by. You want to get it out so far and then there's two legs inside on both sides. So hand at the top, hand at the bottom, pull the leg down. Adjust the nut which, which then adjusts the telescopic height of your awning. So. Just the height and then wind it and walk the awning out until you're happy it's out far enough the rafter bar clips in at the top here so it clips in here and here so it gives added support when the awning's out to full extension and then always remember to put it in when you leave the van unattended or you go in on an evening, don't leave the awning out. Pop the legs back up. And then wind the awning. Back in and remove your handle. On the back of the vehicle, you've got your reversing camera at the top. Then turn around to the passenger side. Behind this panel here is where your boiler lives. So your boiler drains in there as well. So when you drain the vehicle down in the winter, you wanna make sure all the water is out of the vehicle. So this valve here is called a Truma anti-frost valve and when it detects 3 degrees when the vehicle's not in use it will drop the water automatically so there's a button on the back which pushes out, a little blue button so you'll feel it directly on the back, it's just down here this blue button, when that pops out it's automatically dropped the water but don't rely on the valve because if it ever does become faulty then you're liable for the repair and you've got to fix the, your boiler so what you can do is when winterizing it just turn the diamond from side to side to front to back a little nibble pop out and 10 litres of water will start draining out underneath the van there that's draining the boiler off so that the boiler is then safe when you're not using it that no water is going to freeze in there you then open the fresh in the waste and all the taps throughout the vehicle so that no water stays in any lines and then always do it in reverse so shut the fresh in the waste shut the boiler shut the taps fill the vehicle with water go in put the panel on put the pump on which i'll show you how to do in a moment go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get an automatic flow of cold water straight away because pulling it from the tank to the tap once you go to the hot side, it'll cough splutter until you get a free flow of water and it's transferring the water from the fresh water tank into the boiler of 10 litres until you get a free flow on one tap then do them all and your system's primed but remember, drain it off because it isn't covered under your warranty and that's just your vent for your heater when operating on gas to hook the vehicle up, you get your hooker blade, lift the collar and slide it on like so Always hook the van up first, then the power point, and do it in reverse order when unhooking. And there's a small black clip just on the left hand side that you just need to push down to release the pins in the hooker blade. External shower point. So there's a bullfinch connection which fits into here with a trigger gun on the end of the hose. And as long as you've had got the pump on, and as long as you've had the hot water on, you can have a hot or you can do it a mix. So you can hose the dogs off yourselves the kids, the bikes, the boots, whatever you want but the pump needs to be on to pressurise the water 
to this point like all taps in the vehicle fresh water filler so to fill the fresh water tank which is underneath your dinette seat you need to put a hose pipe into there the flat end make sure you carry a hose with some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site and fill it until it either overflows or until you're happy you do have enough water on board You've got some storage underneath here, but it is taken up by the hydraulic leveling system tank. So that's just the motor there. That's the tank for the hydraulic oil. So do just make sure that you're keeping an eye on that. And you can get us to top that up on your servicing. Here you have your diesel filler. So to, to fill with diesel, you need to use the Fiat key. Pop that in there. Then you can put the diesel nozzle in and fill with fuel. You've got a step switch here for this step. It's just on the top there. And then your bonnet release is in the side of the dashboard. So down the side, little lever, pull that. That releases the bonnet. The engine battery is situated underneath the cab floor, underneath this panel here. So we'll release the panel and you can get to the engine battery and your leisure battery. And then your seat spin. So lift it up, turn them round. You may have to bring the seat forward first to then spin the seat fully round into the living space. But make sure both seats are fully fastened in before you do start driving goes into there keeps the bonnet open main one you're going to need is your screen wash which is in the top left hand corner and then you put fluids at your back so you do have your power steering fluid your coolant your brake fluid your oil filler and dipstick for checking your levels and then should you ever need to jump start the vehicle you've got an earthen point just up the top here and then between the air filter and the fuse box on the side there, putting your key in or a screwdriver and lifting that up exposes the positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start. So to operate the mobile VETA control panel, so you've got your master switch in the bottom right hand corner which turns the vehicle on and off. Should you be hooked up you'll get 230 volt, should you not it will just be 12 volt off your leisure battery. You've got an auxiliary which will send power to the outside TV point. You've got your pump which will pressurise your water to your taps, toilet, shower, exterior shower but do make sure that you've got enough water on board before you turn the pump on and it'll tell you above how much water is on board at any one time and then you'll hear the pump in the background just kicking in pressurizing and then it turns itself off on and light on the outside of the vehicle lights on the inside of the vehicle which are all then individually switched around the van you'll notice you've got your cab battery level your leisure battery level your fresh water, your waste water, shows you that we are receiving 230 volts. You've got your interior and exterior temperature. You've got your time and you've got your date on the control panel there. Tobery, the Truma CP digital control panel. So to turn it on and off completely, you just press and hold. A long press and a long hold will turn it off and then press it again it'll turn it back on and then to get into the menu you just want to press it and you've got a motorhome with a thermometer in in the top 
left hand corner. This is how hot you want the room temperature of the vehicle to be. So you've got all the way to 30 degrees or you've got all the way down to off. So once you're happy with the temperature that you've selected, you just press enter and that'll save that to the temperature that you've selected. And then moving on, you've got your water. So should you have water in the boiler, you can have it on. Should you not, don't put it on, have it off because you can burn the element out. So you've got eco, which is 40 degrees of heating your water. Hot, which is 60 degrees. And boost, which will turn off the heating and prioritize the water first. So for this, we'll just say hot, 60 degrees of heating your water, 10 liters at a time. And then next, you've got a gas bottle and electric sign. This is what source you're heating the water, the vehicle, or both off. So you've got gas, which you'd use if you're wild camping. You've got mixture one, which is 750 watts of electric and gas. You've got mixture two, which is 1500 watts of electric and gas. So you'd use this more in the winter if you were in desperate need of hot water or the van was cold when you first arrive on site and you want to get it up to temperature quick. Use mixture two, obviously it'll reduce the time it takes to heat both sources. And then you do have electric on one kilowatt, which is 750 watts, or electric on two kilowatts. So you'd use electric on one kilowatt on small SEL sites and airs abroad, but on most camping and caravan and club sites throughout the UK, you can use electric on two. If you've paid your site fees, don't waste your gas, use their electric. And then you do have your, energy, your fan in the top right. So this is a 12 volt assisted fan. So eco is quieter on an evening and takes a smaller feed of 12 volt. High obviously blasts the heat around the vehicle full capacity. Timer in the bottom left so you can time the heater to come on and off, but just the one so. Time on the main display panel here so you can adjust the time to suit. I'll put that right for you now. And then should you get a warning triangle in the middle, you can go to the spanner setting. Go all the way to reset, press reset, press preset, and it will restart the control panel and you'll have to go in and set the temperature, the water, the energy source, and the fan speed all again. And then to turn off, you just press and hold. Underneath your dinette seat, so if you remove the cushions, this is your fresh water tank. So to drain the fresh water off, if you've taken on contaminated water or you just want to drain it down for the winter or you're not using it for a couple of weeks, remove the red cap off the top of the tank and in the back of the tank, you'll see the white handle there. So you need to lift that handle and it's a plug and then all the water in this tank will drain out directly out underneath the chassis and you'll have drained your fresh water tank. Underneath the hatch in the double floor by the lounge just underneath your table you do have your main battery fuses here an isolation key for your leisure battery so if you were leaving the van for a couple of weeks parked up and you didn't want a power drain on the vehicle you can turn the key to the off position and it'll stop any drain on your leisure battery you've got all your 12 volt fuses there so do carry some spare blade fuses and it tells you what does what and what amperage is required and then you do have your main trip switch and mcbs on mains 230 volt so if you've tripped the van out try here before you try your main site and that is just your charger unit there to charge the battery. To operate the MAV hydraulic control panel. So this is the panel where you put your hydraulic ram legs down. So what you need to do is you need to turn it on and then you need to either press up. So we've got them down now so I'll show you them going up. So turn it on and then press up. And the hydraulic legs will start to release. Mm -hmm. 
And then to put them down, you just press down. It'll start with the front, then it'll go to the back, and then it'll jump between the front and the back just to get the last couple of inches to get you level. And then when it lights up in the middle, it means the van is completely level from front to back. And should you ever need to put it into manual mode, you press the hand and then you press whatever leg you want to adjust until you get the green light in the middle. And then just make this final last few. Adjustments and it's completely level. To operate your oven and grill, you've got a light here, spark igniter on the button, and then you can... that's the oven away at the back there. And then operate the grill, you know the opposite way. And there's your grill lit. To operate your fridge with separate freezer box, so you turn on and off here, turn it off and then turn it on. And A stands for automatic energy selection, so what that'll do is it'll pick the best source that's available to the vehicle at any one time. So we're hooked up at the moment and we've got gas on board. It knows not to waste gas, so it's gone to hook up, which is the picture of the plug. Once I unhook, it will switch over to gas. And then once I start the engine, it will go to 12 volt, which is a feed from the engine alternator to the fridge, which keeps it as a cool box. So before you go away, a couple of days before, if you keep it at home, hook it up, Put your fridge on and allow it to chill on its own. Then the night before, put your shopping in and give that 8 to 10 hours to chill. And then when you're ready to travel, as long as it's on automatic, just unhook it and turn the engine on. Drive to your site and then either hook it back up. Or if you need to turn to gas, it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas. Once the engine's been knocked off in case you've left your gas on and you've pulled into a petrol forecourt for diesel. That's the last thing you want is your fridge trying to ignite in the petrol station. So what you need to do is you need to press the square button, take the airway and then select the source you want. So gas there at the end. This is your temperature so when pre-chilling have it on 5. Knock it down to 3 or 4 once you get your shopping in. Otherwise it can sometimes freeze the fridge and the freezer, more so the fridge and then you do have this little button here which does a frame heater which stops the doors from sticking to the to the van or should I say to the fridge even and sometimes it can stick closed so put the frame heater on it'll put heat around it to stop them from sticking once you are finished with using the van for a, a week you winterizing for a couple of months, clean your fridge out and leave the doors open because if you don't it traps the air inside and then you'll get a funny smell in your van and you'll wonder what it is. So underneath both catches you've got these little toggles. So under that one on the fridge, freezer and on the fridge one you've got one as well. Put that into here, so rest it into these pins and it'll keep the door a jar to stop smell and mould growing in the fridge and the freezer. In the kitchen area you've got three gas rings. So 
So allow the thermocouple to get warm before you release and that'll keep the rings on. There you have three lit rings. Allow them to cool so that they're cool enough to touch before you put the cooker hood down because otherwise sometimes you can shatter these glass lids. <coughs> put your lights, a 230 volt socket, twin USB for charging your phones, your devices there. A bin, a waste bin at the back. As long as the pump's on, you'll get a flow of water. And that's your hot water there, warm. So your hot water system's working. Storage above. Push the handle down to release the travel catch. Cutlery drawer. Storage drawer. And then deeper storage drawer for your pots and pans. Storage underneath the sink. So you've got two shelves here. Or you can lift and slide it out and you've got a little bit of storage in the back. And then you do have five gas isolation valve taps. These are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced. Any problems with gas for yourself, turn the bottle off to be safe. But you can isolate each appliance. So you've got the cooker, the fridge, the boiler, the water heater and the hob. So now in the toilet to operate it, obviously you can spin the toilet, lift the lid, press the blue button to get your fresh water flush. So always flush the toilet first, put a little bit of water in the bowl, helps keep the seal between the cassette and the top of the toilet lubricated. And then you want to open the blade before you use it. So what you've got to do is this is the blade handle. So pull it towards you, it will open it, everything will go into the cassette and then obviously you flush after use. If you're going to use any pink liquid, if you've bought the blue and the pink together, just dilute the pink in a sprayer bottle. So, so much pink, so much water, spray the bowl, flush and then you want to slide this blade back to the left and it isolates the cassette and then when the cassette is full, You'll be able to slide it straight out the van. If that was to be open, the mechanism stays engaged and the cassette will physically not come out the vehicle. But when the cassette is full, you'll get a light on here on this diagram just underneath to show that the cassette needs emptying. Toilet cabinet. And toilet cabinet above. Soap dispenser, toothbrush holder, and you've got a towel reel and the toilet brush there. Across from the toilet you do have your shower. So you've got this hanging reel here, which, which comes down and you can hang your wet coats and wet towels on. If you've been caught in the rain with your coats on or if you've used a shower, hang your wet clothing in here and your towels. And then when you winterize, if you just unscrew the shower head from the hose, because you wouldn't want any water potentially sitting in there and freezing and cracking and splitting the pipe. So take the head off and lie the hose in the tray with the mixer tap in the open position. Light for your shower cubicles just here, this little light switch there for the shower. Twin singles at the back of the vehicle with Wardrobes underneath, so you've got your hanging rail, some shelving in this side and some storage in the door. Very strong hinge on that door there. And some storage underneath the other bed. Storage underneath the steps. Twin single beds, but if you wanted to make a double across the width of the vehicle, you can. Pull the board forward and then underneath the board, because you can't now use your steps, 
you do have a ladder to get up and down and those cushions there just go into here and create a double bed across the width of the vehicle. So it's up to you whether you're using it as a double or you're using it as two singles. To fold the cab seats down, to bring the drop down bed down above the cab, what you need to do is you need to lift this handle here, fold the seat flat, fold this one flat, fold them both down, release the seat belt and then it is just a manual pull down bed on gas struts and there you've got your ladder which just clips on here to gain access to that double drop down bed. So now in the cab to the right of the driver you do have your hand rate which is just located down here and then you've got your electric mirror adjustment which is the top mirror only so you can choose between the left and the right on the coach style mirrors and adjust the top the bottom one's got to be manually adjusted so you can just slide your window along and then adjust the bottom mirror You've got your headlight adjustment here and then just here you've got your rear fog lights on the end of your wiper stalk you've got a trip computer which goes through your average and instant consumption your traveling times your distance that you've traveled and your range that's in your fuel tank so how many miles is left in your fuel tank Answer decline a call, scroll through your radio channels, your audio, all your contacts, volume and mute, and then you've got voice command on the bottom of the wheel. Lighting indicators, and then on the bottom stall, you've got a cruise control or a speed limiter. So off in the middle, turning it up, goes to cruise, and cruise will come on, green light in the bottom of the rev count. Get your desired speed, push up to set push up to speed up, pull down to slow down. To cancel, you can either cancel it on the end of the stalk and then click it again and resume it, or you can hit it, the foot brake, and turn the cruise control off. Should you want to use a speed limiter though, you need to turn it at the bottom. And it'll say SLD, and it'll say 20 mile an hour. Press and hold goes up in fives, go up slowly, goes up in ones. And it'll say off to turn the speed limit hour on press the end of the stalk and then when off goes away it is on it's active so if you're going through an average speed camera zone 50 mile an hour you might want to set that and then once you're out of it hit the end of it turn it off and then you can flick over at the cruise control six speed manual gearbox with lift the color into reverse which brings on your rear view camera there so you'll see the lines, red indicates the back of the vehicle and then just shows your distance. Cup holders with auxiliary and USB. USB for charging and 12 volt here. You've got heated mirrors, locks, the doors, hazards, hill descent control which is pretty much useless on a manual and traction control plus so if you were stuck on wet grass or wet gravel try here turn this off and then you may be able to pull away without spinning and causing you to get stuck any further climate control so you've got your temperature here so you can adjust the temperature and then the three arrows you've got your distribution so whether you want it to go to the screen your face or your feet fan speed which goes up this scale here so how fast you want the fan off max for the windscreen recirculation and air conditioning and then above to operate your head unit on off volume FM AM DAB press 1 to 3 to save your favorite channels which is just press and hold and wait for it to beep or you can go to all and select tw 12 of your favorite stations takes a CD in the top media is either CD Bluetooth CD 
just start again CD auxiliary or USB navigation is powered by TomTom Tom. so you can go to na navigate to and you want to go address and you want to pop in your postcode or your city but if you go broaden it what you need to do is you need to press the flag here and you can change it to the country and then if you go to France and Spain you can put coordinates in instead of postcodes because they don't have them out there and then to pair your phone you'd go phone do you want to pair phone yes find X find you connect on your phone and then you'll just start your pairing with that make sure the pins match then it'll ask you if you want to download your contacts just press allow and your contacts will be saved into the phone book so whoever rings you if they're saved it'll come up with a name instead of just a number so that's your head unit top glove box is heated and cooled via the air conditioning which is this one here whereas the bottom one just a standard glove box sun visor and then pull a little toggle and it'll take it back up for when you're traveling and then when you're parked up and you want to black the windscreen and the side windows out so we pull one out pull the other one out Tip them together, they are just magnets, and then you do exactly the same this side onto there, and then this one off the door along to there. Electric window on the door, and then to lock the door manually, you just push the, the catch down at the back.